Hello, brother Armin. How are you? Good, good. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here today. Um, so, I just just so for the people that don't know, there has been you recently had an in- interview, and you said some things in that interview that we want to discuss. Do you want to, for the people that haven't seen the interview and don't know what we're talking about, do you want to talk about what's going on? Yes, I gave an interview uh, with uh, Candace Owens. Mm-hmm. I was on the Candace Owens show, and uh, we discussed many topics including the leftist ideology. But the comments that I made regarding the leftist ideology came in the context of uh, Candace fearing for my safety in the West. And I also responded that I also fear for your safety in the West. And I said that ISIS, and I also said in the West, are more dangerous Uh, Sorry, I said that the leftists in the West are more dangerous than ISIS. Did you actually say in the West, or is that something you added later? No, it was in the sentence following it. Okay. So in the interview, we were talking about the West, and I am pretty sure I mentioned the West. Pretty sure. Mm. Pretty sure. But is that, do you not think, okay, so you said they're more violent, and then la- later on in a l- later video you mentioned maybe you shouldn't have said violent, you should have said dangerous instead of violent, right? Uh, but it doesn't make a difference to me. Like, to me, I, uh, I come from a family hmm. that have been uh, massacred by uh, terrorists, exiled. We ran away from country to country. And then I come to Australia, I speak out, and I get attacked and punched in the face by leftists. So, I, to me, violent or dangerous, it's one thing. But do you think that might be an exaggeration? Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, every every side, every political movement or any movement or ideology has its extremes. But to, say, well, to, but to look at that and try to generalize and make it represent the entire uh, group uh, may be not fair, don't you is think? Is Justin Trudeau extreme? Is he an extreme leftist? Is Soros an extreme leftist? Is, but, is Macron an extreme leftist? But are they more dangerous than ISIS? Of course, they're bringing ISIS in and they're funding them and they brought them in, they brought back jihadis. Is Obama... No, I want to ask you a question. Is Obama, is he an extreme leftist? Um, define extreme leftist. No, is he like Antifa? He's not. No, no. Not. He's a moderate no, leftist. But, 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 but I, I criticize Obama and Trump because they are extremists in another sense, in the same sense that they fund, they fund um, Saudi regime that uses bombs to, to use the weapons that they sell to, uh, to like a country like Saudi Arabia to, to bomb in civilians. Do you think like Trump is an extremist? I mean, if you uh, want to no. criticize the right for being dangerous... You are, do you, you are mixing between war and terrorism. Right? Me and you both know war kills people and terrorism kills people. But the governments don't see that. When America says that Saudi Arabia is defending itself, okay? The Americans say that. Mm. Uh, Those who make excuses, they say Saudi Arabia is defending itself. I think it's ridiculous. Right. So they don't consider selling weapons to uh, Saudi Arabia, to bomb Yemen, they don't consider that terrorists. But the American government does consider the IRGC as terrorists. And they do consider Hezbollah, let me finish, and they do consider Hezbollah as terrorists, and they do consider ISIS as terrorists, yet they fund them, and they support them, and they gave them citizenships, the Iranian regime officials, 2,500 under the Obama administration. So is Obama a far leftist? He's not. He's a moderate leftist. And this is the moderate leftist viewpoint. And I'm speaking about the elite left. I don't care about, like I said, I don't care about little... uh, uh, people, I, I talk about the giants because they are okay. the ones influencing global politics. So, 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 for, so, would you agree uh, that the right could also be considered more dangerous than ISIS, given that they also funded terrorist organization? Wasn't it the Reagan organi- uh, regime that funded the Mujahideen? Uh, wasn't the wasn't it under again Reagan administration? And was it was Rumsfeld that funded uh, that gave weapons of mass destruction to Saddam? Uh, 
and again, and yeah, war is different than terrorism, but war produces terrorists. Isn't the support for people like Trump uh, of Saudi Arabia, is it not going to lead to more terrorism in, in the Middle East? Would you also not, like, if you want to look at uh, the, you know, the, the, the things that the left has done that causes terrorism, do you not also look at the things that the right have has done that causes terrorism? Of course I do. I okay. do. So you're saying both the left and the right are more dangerous than ISIS? The far left mm -hmm. are very dangerous, the far left. Uh, and the far right are... Uh, sorry, let me start again. Okay. You know what? I got confused because I'm drinking coffee. Okay. And then I remembered that one of the viewers, the Muslim viewer, is going to think I'm drinking in Ramadan. And I wanted to tell you that <laughs> we should have explained that I'm traveling. And when you're traveling... Yeah, yeah. You don't fast. Anyway. If you can't, if you can't see the city walls, that means you, can, you don't have to fast. <laughs> yeah, I know my, but, I know my but ID. When I saw myself now drinking, yeah, yeah. I said uh, perhaps the Muslims will get confused talking to <laughs> atheist republic. Now he's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but let me answer you. Right, right, right. The far right mm -hmm. are dangerous. Yes, the far left are equally dangerous. However, the moderate left mm -hmm. are also dangerous. The moderate right are not dangerous. Uh, but I may give you examples of but moderate right. Like you, if you mention Obama, I'm talking about the Reagan administ administration. I'm talking about the Bush administration. I'm talking about the Trump administration. These are not far right. These are just mainstream right. Yeah, but, but you know, you can't compare uh, these two with mm -hmm. the hundreds and, and the ideology on the left. You can't compare it. I won't compare it. What I, I, the reason why I, I think I can compare it is because, like, the the war that, for example, the the way that the weapons by Saudi Arabia is being used right now, which mm. Trump supports, and to be 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 balanced, Obama also supported. It has caused caused the greatest humanitarian crisis of our time in Yemen in his in yeah. in our lifetime. Yeah, and I think compared you know, to the one terrorist you know, attack why? here in the West and there, like that's nothing compared to that. No, do you know why this is happening? It's happening because me and you mm -hmm. are not agreeing upon a definition of terrorism. Okay. And when when speaking uh, on a humanitarian level, I agree with you completely. On a humanitarian level, on a political level, you know, on on a social level, Terrorism has many definitions, mm -hmm. so they don't consider supporting Saudi Arabia against Iran or Yemen as terrorism. They don't consider it. So what's the point of us holding it against them? It's like you telling me, mm -hmm. but the Bukhari says this, and I tell you, I, I don't believe in it. They right. don't believe in this definition. But then you switch, but I think like you're now switching what the topic is, because you were mentioning dangerous. When we're talking about danger, then we measure it in in the harm to our fellow human beings, right? Not whether they def define it as terrorism or not. It doesn't yeah. matter if they define it as terrorism or exactly. not. Exactly. You right. see, the difference here is that me and Candace were talking about a personal issue, my mm -hmm. life, and mm -hmm. her, my safety and her safety. Therefore, I could use the word danger. Mm -hmm. When I want to speak in general about the leftist ideology that brings the violence, that allows people to attack us, then I can use the word violence because I'm speaking on a more general uh, aspect, but personally, I can use the word dangerous because it's on a personal level. Okay, so on a personal level, if you're only talking about a personal level, do you really think that mainstream leftists p cause a, like are a threat to your personal safety? Like, I would think that if you get attacked as either a far leftist or a far right or a Muslim extremist, I don't think mainstream right wing or mainstream left wing or mainstream Muslims would be attacking you on any of these sides. Uh, I agree with you, which is why I say I'm speaking about the elites and I mentioned Obama and, and Macron and, and these people. But do you no, think no, people no. like Obama and Macron are, no. a, are a threat to your personal safety? People like right. that? No. This is the difference, Armin. When I say that the leftist, <laughs> look at you get all worked up. Because <laughs> I've met you in person, I know what you're like. <laughs> anyway, uh, when I say the leftist ideology, threat to my person, Obama bringing in people who would literally hang me in Iran, right? right Giving right. them 2,500 citizenships in the USA. Macron bringing in return jihadists. Uh, Canada bringing in the return jihadists. Uh, ISIS returnees. I mean, 
This is a is a threat to my personal life. Obama is not threatening me directly. Macron is not threatening me directly. But what they do directly Im- impacts my life. Okay, so if you're talking indirectly, then you could go to the mainstream right wing as well because you could say the whole reason why we have all this immigration coming to the western countries is because of the failed war in iraq which was under bush is because of the rise of uh, rise of isis because which is started with uh, um, reagan administration funding mujahideen in afghanistan so given that these people are now coming into western countries and our person is indirectly also because of their policy which is now indirectly a personal threat to you so indirectly, you could also blame the mainstream right. No? Okay. So uh, can we go even a bit further back and find the leftist and then blame them indirectly as well? Well, or that's what we're we doing. Just keep going back until we go back to the Prophet Muhammad. And, and, and <laughs> No, you <laughs> can't just keep going back. I'm speaking about a social issue today. We're it's speaking it's society it's today. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, look, nobody is making excuses. I'm an Iraqi citizen. Nobody is saying that the war in Iraq was right. We know. It, it, it removed Saddam, it gave us a million Saddams. All of these terrorists now we're dealing with. I know that. But I'm speaking on, on a personal level. These people, politicians, the elites today, are doing things that are affecting my life and your life and everybody else. So, what, so you think ISIS returnees coming to Canada will not target you, Armin? Are you kidding me? Actually, I don't think they will, because if you look at their attacks, they're mostly at large crowds, random people. It's not usually not targeted towards something, someone specific. Okay. Do you remember me and you were sitting with that uh, that Jew? What's his name? Hariqa Jew? Hariqa Jew. He's a yeah, mo- uh, Muslim. <laughs> I can't get over his surname, Hariqa Jew. Yeah. He's a Jew in his surname. It makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, look. Remember when you asked him a question? And he said that, yes, he would execute you. Did you, ab- about you being an apostate under an Islamic caliphate? Under an Islamic caliphate, yes. He said. So exactly. If this I don't is, repent. If you don't repent. Remember when you were walking in, in Lakemba in, in Australia and you spoke to that guy and he said, yes, under Islam, he would be killed. Right. All right. But so what I'm trying to get is these are the same people that are being imported. The only difference is the people you interact with, they don't know the damage you're doing to Islam. Right. They don't but, know. Okay, so but w- what I'm saying is that just like do- when you, I've seen you being careful that w- you don't say that all Muslims li- are like that. You don't say that, right? Um, and I think like when we're talking about the left and the right as well, we, we need to not... If we have a specific like specific problem with some people on the left, we, it's always helpful if we specify that the the specific yeah. argument some, rather than talking about the whole left or the whole some right. Some million people. Some million people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but don't you think it's more helpful if you be like this argument from the le-? because do you? I, I just think like what depending on the tribe that we belong to, we take the most ridiculous arguments on the other side and we just make it seem like this is the entire point of the other side. But they, the left, a lot of people on the left also do this with right. Like they look at the alt-right people and they try to make it seem like the entire right, they represent the entire right-wing people, right? And I think we shouldn't be doing that to left-wing people. And no, sometimes we, should, we well, should, we should do it to both equally. Or we should do it, not, generalize neither, wouldn't it be... No, not, no we're right. not generalizing when we're talking to the left. The left is the mainstream today. You look at all the universities, most of the media, most of the people that run the banks, most of the corporations, most of the corruption comes from leftist elites. And Trump people, is the what, president. Leftist? No, I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about in general. Right. In general, they are leftists. And who votes, who puts these leftists in power? People who are leftists just like them. We're not talking far left, we're talking just leftists, putting leftists in power and expecting leftist ideology to be implemented, especially in universities. Okay, so would you would, do you think you're uh, criticizing the left would be more effective if you acknowledge the good uh, their good arguments as well? Like for example, would you act, would Armin, I I am the only imam I know of okay that sits with leftist uh, politicians and uh, you know has such a strong bond with them. Mm. Uh, I said, you know, the former Australian Prime Minister just passed away recently, Bob Hawke, right? I'm the only imam I know of that would sit with Bob Hawke and have falafel, right? Me and him are just chilling, literally. Mm. Um, You know, may he rest in peace. But the point I'm trying to get is, 
I have many uh, affiliations with leftist organizations, right? right. But you know, they, they know. They know my position from them. And they know what I think about their policies. They know what I think about open borders and weak immigration. And they respect it. The moment they try to harm me, I'll call them out. I don't care who they are. But it, when I listen to your interview, you don't say these arguments from the left is dangerous or these people that are doing something like this are, are doing something dangerous, maybe without even knowing it. You just said the left is more the more dangerous. Yeah, because saying. we're not discussing the left. We're discussing my life. And I mentioned the statement and I moved on to the topic of Islam. We have, we, if we were talking about the left, we'll have this discussion exactly the same. So, so, so for example, like, let's say, do you think you would, it, it would be fair if somebody... Uh, you know, like for example, you're critical. You're critical of somebody like Soros, right? But if if imagine if somebody instead of saying like, "Oh, that the Jews," instead of just mentioning the person that they are criticizing, don't you think that's a, that's going to like? Wouldn't you call that out as like, okay, maybe don't generalize all the Jews like this? Wouldn't you call that out? I think like when we do this to the entire left, it's very similar when we see no. some. No, I would not. You know why? Why? Because the majority of the Jews despise Jews like Mark Zuckerberg and Soros and would love for them to be called that, but disassociated from them. So the but, only thing I would do mm. is just clarify so, that this guy is, is not really working in the interest of the Jewish people. That's it. So if you look at the left, I think like the, 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 the ridiculous arguments from the left are highlighted and mentioned more. But if you look at it historically and even in now... Uh, there's a lot of good coming from the left as well. I mean, when it comes to fighting for women rights, when it comes to fighting for gay rights, when it comes to fight, they, they don't fight for women or gay rights. It's all hypocrisy. It's no, all hypocrisy. It's the far left that is the, hypo the no, hypocrisy. It's no, not the left. The what? left are the biggest hypocrites when it comes to women's rights, and the left are the biggest hypocrites when it comes to gay rights. And if you want proof, the left are aligning themselves with the extremist Muslims who throw gays off buildings and who have no respect for women. Not That's, all of them. Not, not all, all of them. Not, not most of them, actually. Huh? Not all I mean, mm. all leftists, all of them. Oh my God. Big, small, center left, far left, all of them mm. do not realize, whether intentionally or purposely don't want to realize, the mm. threat of Islamic extremists to the gays and to women. Okay, yeah, keep aligning. Themselves. I've met them. I've met leftists that are anti-Islam. So what? So you just what? said you just said to me that all leftists. Yeah, but you, you're, not you're, mentioning, you're mentioning an exception. How many did you meet? Okay, but you just said all. So maybe yeah, okay. say most. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, so now we're gonna. We're well, gonna I mean, uh, I mean, this is the problem. I mean, I think this is a serious problem. Generalizing doesn't help our I'm side. Not generalizing, I'm not. Yeah. Look, for, if I tell you that everybody knows Sadiq Khan sucks, it's not like everybody in Nigeria and everybody in China. Some people don't even know who he is. You get my point. So where do you get this information that most people on the left don't see the threat of Islam to gay rights, to women rights, to all the other values that we hold dear? Like, where do you, where, do you is it based on your pers the news, personal experience, or is there data somewhere that like shows that most of the left doesn't see the threat? No, it's just the fact that I haven't seen a leftist that recognizes the threat of ISIS onto gays and, and, and ex-Muslims and so on. I haven't seen. If there is, show me. Can, can you name me one person? Yep. One leftist? Uh, Steph Andrews, Matt Dillon, T. No, uh, no. I mean, like, can you name me one leftist that will tell you hmm? that the leftists, his friends, are completely wrong for associating themselves with Islamic extremists and at the same time calling for women, women's and LGBT rights and ignoring the fact that the Islamic extremists want to kill the two they're fighting for. Do you have a leftist like that? If there is, I would really love to learn about it. Okay, a leftist that is thinks Islam is an, against these rights and also champions for the rights of women and gay rights and stuff like that? No. Huh. A leftist that does exactly what you just said, but hmm. also acknowledges the fact that the leftist friends of his oh. are in this problem the same way yes. I say that Islam... Yes, yes. Uh, and Seth and Andrews. Seth Andrews. Would you want to have him on your show, uh, show and talk to him? Seth Andrews. I, I honestly, I apologize. I've never heard of him. Okay. 
and it's oh, true. Can to I my I'll introduce you. Yeah. Yeah. He's so great. no insult. I, I really don't know. No insult. Uh, but it's not my field. If there is someone, and that's wonderful. Okay, there's and many. Due, uh, due to my ignorance. Okay, okay. There, there's, there's many. But here's what I think. I think that the the crazy people on the right are more interesting for co news coverage, and the crazy people on the left are also more interesting for news coverage. And this the main the same people on the right and the same people on the left are boring, and also they're most of them are not activists. They have other lives. They have a job. They're not going to make YouTube channels or podcasts or go on Twitter and fight with people, right? So. I think the the same people on both sides do not get much coverage right. because it's boring and not interesting. And then we the people on the left they look at the right wing people that are getting coverage and they're like what the hell is this? And the people on the right look at the left wing people that are getting coverage and like what the hell is that? Like they get scared because they only see the extremes on the other side. I, I agree with you completely, okay. but still, when I walk outside my door. I'm not walking into Fox or CNN. I'm walking into reality. And in front, and I know in my city, right, there are a thousand ISIS returnees. Who brought them? I left this government because it believes they can be rehab, rehab and, you know, their rehab programs and reintegrated into community. Do you think there's a... Okay, I, I, I've been trying to figure this out. Do you think there might be a bit of an exaggeration about the problems that it's causing the society? Because I look at I everybody is giving me biased information, and I honestly don't know who to trust. I live here in Canada, in Vancouver. I haven't no noticed anything like everybody telling me out. Everybody, the people outside of Canada are telling me Canada is gone. Canada is lost, and I'm like. Everything is fine here. So, and when people are like t telling me that, oh, Germany is like the sky is falling in Germany, and Germany is now an Islamic state, and people in Germany, my friends are like, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference yet, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't really know. Uh, I think like me, both sides are maybe exaggerating. Like maybe the people on the left are n denying the real problems that. Oh, no, nobody's exaggerating. It's just not in your city. It's not in your city. If you lived in Ottawa, you would feel it. You see, you went to Australia. You went straight to Lakemba. Did you feel it? Yeah. Did you feel the threat in Lakemba? Well, uh, I want to make a point. You felt the threat in Lakemba, right? I didn't I, feel I didn't unsafe. Feel like, I don't feel that threat. It's just that it's in a different city. But even in Lakemba, I didn't feel unsafe. I felt like, okay. Oh, 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 the guy's telling you he will kill you. And but, you don't no, feel unsafe. I didn't feel unsafe, to be honest. I, I felt like he had some pro some issues. like I, Because, f okay, his views are dangerous, but he didn't, this would not be, th I knew, because I know these kind of people. This was not a person that would ever kill me himself, right? Yeah, but many uh, people like him did actually, from the same area, from the very road you were walking in, in Lakemba, mm -hmm. went and joined ISIS. In fact, the majority of people that went to join ISIS from Australia came from Sydney and Melbourne. You went into the hottest uh, stronghold for the extremists, mm -hmm. and you were confronted by a man that told you that you would be killed under Islam, and that was his goal to establish Islam. But uh, did you notice how he was and, uncomfortable? And, and the only difference between... Uh, the only difference, uh, sorry, the only reason why you were not killed that day was because of the law. So the that's moment why I say, that's why I feel safe in Australia. But so you didn't feel threatened even ten percent with that guy speaking to you like that. Um, okay, so no, no, answer me. You didn't feel threatened. At that time, I didn't feel threatened. Maybe if you had talked to me before I went there, I would be more threatened. <laughs> feel more no, seriously. Threatened. <laughs> I mean, then that just comes down to your personal bravery. I mean, if you're not threatened. But the point is, the point I'm trying to make is that you will not find this attitude in the West. Uh, West in Perth, for example, or in Adelaide. Uh, totally different. So if you're sitting in Vancouver, mm -hmm. or wherever you are. Sorry, can we mention your location? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So if you're sitting in your city and you can't uh, uh, feel what Trudeau is doing to the country, then maybe you should visit Toronto more often, <laughs> and you should visit Ottawa more often, and you'll see the difference. But I, I'm looking at the stats when it comes to terrorist attacks. And, um, it, uh, it, stats it, are useless. Stats are useless? Useless. Why? Use, use, in fact, statistics only prove that we have failed. Um, I, do not need, I don't need you to give me statistics that we only have this much 
of a problem or that the problem is only this big and it's not that big or it's less than one. Why do we allow it to grow into statistics in the first place? Why do we allow statistics to, to take place? We don't want these uh, violent people in the country to begin with. So don't tell me we have this much and that it, much. Isn't statistics the best way to figure out what's going on? And like it's better than personal experiences, isn't it? For that for that very reason, I agree, just to understand what's going on. But to use it in an argument and tell me that, you know, it's not as bad as you think it is. Well, well, t show me a statistic. What do you have? Show me. What well, what was it, when was the last, like, terrorist attack? Like, I mean, I, I I don't have it ready, but you, you've you seen, you you know which statistics I'm referring to. Like, the, ter the number of terrorist attacks in Western countries, it has been very, very, very low. In fact, it has been dropping. Right. In fact, um, in well, fact, uh, uh, most a lot of the terrorist attacks that uh, were even planned, our our government in Canada has been very efficient in stopping them before they even. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. Maybe, you know about the Toronto attacks, for example. Maybe one or two or three. They they've been able well, to stop the rest. They all cover ups. All cover ups. Cover ups. Like maybe, actual terrorist attack that happens yes, that they cover up. Actual. I can give you one. I was in in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. I was just down here in Mississauga when uh, the shopping center explosion happened in the shopping center in Mississauga. And nobody knows what happened until today. Why? Because the Khalistani terrorists or Islamic extremists or whatever. Nobody wants to speak about it. Mm. So they so, cover up. So I, I, I don't know about that, so I can't comment on that. But, but, just but I, I, I'll look that up and see where sure. I can find that. But, but and it's not one, not just one, not just one, mm. not just one incident. Uh, now in, in France... The blast in France, they covered it up for, for a few days until, you know, media pressure. Now, uh, Algerian man or oh, a guy joins ISIS, Alabama man, Alabama woman. What is Alabama man? Tell me his name. Tell me his name. Abdullahi Abdullah, some garbage like that. Don't give no, me Alabama woman. No, I, I agree that there's a media bias uh, when it comes to trying to be PC, uh, uh, you know, the, the PC do, about do, how they talk about this. I know, but agree. do you agree? with me that if it was a, a conservative media outlet or a center-right leaning outlet, there will not be a cover-up? Do you agree? Um, yes, but I also think that a lot of the right-wing ones sometimes exaggerate. Yes, okay. Exaggerate, we can, we can find it maybe, uh, we can find accuracy in other articles and, and get a better picture. But, but would a conservative uh, channel hide the name of a terrorist? And refer to them as Alabama man or Alabama woman, a, a genuine. Don't tell me Fox News, <laughs> a no, genuine. Right, right. So, so they would, they wouldn't, oh, but they also, but they, they, they would do some. They would cover up something else, though. They would cover up yeah, other things. Yeah, but look, yeah. Uh, if they cover it up here, we can find it there. Right, but, right. But, uh, but if you're telling me that the whole government that funds the media, right, they all work together with the police to conceal the name of the terrorist. To conceal the religion, to conceal their identity. Right. No, I agree. I agree that bias. I agree that that bias exists. Right. And I think that's a fair point to bring up. But I just think that sometimes um, we exaggerate the, the the problems in the left. The pro pr the left has a lot of problems, and the you know PC culture is one of them. No, right. No, no, I agree. No, no. Armin, let's not try to uh, ignore the fact that the left has evolved. The left has evolved from being an intellectual movement uh, that really fought for human rights and so on. Now it's all uh, you know, involved in intersectionality and how we can gang team up with people we don't agree with just to bring down someone we don't like. Um, the point I'm trying to make is modern day left are not, they're not facing a problem. They are a problem. They are a problem. That's how I see it. Ilhan Omar is not um, you know, suffering from certain misunderstandings or she doesn't know what's happening. No, the problem is that someone like her is a problem, right? The same way she points the finger at the Jews being the problem, right, for what they do. You know, I also have the right to say okay. she's a problem. But, li but li okay, so when people on the left say the right doesn't have a problem, the entire existence of the right is a problem, I criticize them. I'm like, no, that's not right. The right has a problem, uh, many problems, and a lot of people on the right admit those problems and they're trying to address it, right? And I think, like, just completely dismissing the entire group is is not fair. I, I just, may, maybe, maybe I don't, maybe you understand the problem better than I do, okay? So, we'll let the... 
maybe right. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I, right. Again, maybe I'm wrong. But right. from everything I've been through in life and what I see mm. and the societies I move across in uh, and, the, uh, and the problems affecting the world today, they all come from the left. So would you be open to changing your mind if more people from the left uh, reach out to you and say, listen, I'm from the left. I'm I'm against Islam. I'm uh, the reason why I'm against Islam is because of the leftist values that I, I agree with, and I see that as a threat to civilized world. And I, you know, would you if more and more leftists reach out to you and tell you that, would you change your opinion? I would look if they tell me they're against Islam, right? Right? Then oh yeah, actually I, I keep forgetting that you're an imam. <laughs> what right. kind of leftist is against Islam? I know a lot of leftists that are against Islam. No, as in, you know, what, a thousand of them out of how many billion? No, I'm telling you, you can't be a leftist mm. if you if you, if you you don't hug Ilhan Omar and agree with everything she says. What kind of a leftist are you? But see, that, but this is how, but you're now defining the who's a leftist in a way that they will, be guilty, by, by, they will be guilty by definition. <laughs> Ilhan is just an example. I, Embracing I'm, ideology. Okay, I'm just saying that if you define the the left, the leftist, by people that agree with the ridiculous things that you define as the left, then a leftist would be, even if somebody comes and says, well, I'm part of the left and I don't agree with that, you're like, well, you're, it's a no true Scotsman's fallacy. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're just, you're you see, just that's defining them out of existence. Uh, see, I did this on purpose. Okay. Because this is exactly what the left do to me. Imam Tawhidi, you're against extremists, then by definition, a reformist can't be a Muslim. Okay, but just two wrong doesn't make it right, just because they're doing it to no, you. No, it's, it's, it's not, I'm not trying to make, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, bring something wrong and make it right. I'm just using their own definitions. Okay, I'm, but I'm playing their game. But can you can you be open? Like you said, you might be wrong. Like just like I might be wrong, right? But would you be open to changing your opinion if if you meet more people that co consider themselves part of the left and are see Islam as a uh, as a threat? And I I can't believe I'm saying that to you because you're you're, you're actually you're a Muslim and you're an Imam. No, but, but you, you know what I mean. You're coming from the, uh, yeah. the 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 viewpoint that that the the ideology of the left is actually against Islam. Yeah, which oh, it is. Should, it should be. Islam. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, I don't think that exists today. I don't think this ideology exists. Hmm. Well, I'm not giving up on them. <laughs> no, I know. I don't think that that is the mainstream ideology. Hmm. Like, would you accept it from me if I told you that? Uh, oh, actually, I have another example. Bill Maher. Bill Maher is a mainstream leftist. I really don't want to speak about Bill Maher. Okay, okay. But I'm just saying, okay, there are many examples, though. Well, this man, I... I... Okay, <laughs> okay, I, all right. No, I, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. Um, and I have nothing against him. I just don't understand. And if I don't understand someone, I can't uh, speak about them. I don't understand him. One day he's this side, one day he's that side. Maybe I'm confused. Uh, I don't know, but there's some confusion going on. Right. But... So, but you said you you might be wrong. So, are you not willing to change your position if you if if you eventually meet all these people? No. Yes, of course. Okay, great. Of course, uh, I, I mean, you're speaking to someone who who's a former fundamentalist extremist. I've changed all this way. You think I won't change just a little bit more? Of course, I would. Okay, but so if you show me, you have to convince me. <laughs> okay, okay. We, so uh, now that we're on, like we've been thirty minutes, so you see, you have thirty minutes. I just want to end in this. Given that you said that you used, you changed already a lot, is there ever a chance that you might become an atheist? Never in my life. Never. <laughs> Never ever ever. Okay, I'll tr I'll keep trying though. I'll you try. can keep trying, my brother. You, but you will always be a brother. Um, all of your people, your friends, you know, very dear to me. I I don't have you know. I call myself an imam of peace to put myself in a box so other people don't put me in a box, right? This is who I am. I'm a man of peace. This is, and it's sadly, this is the world today. We try to put people in boxes. But this is where I, where I come from. You be you, I be me, and we'll just, you know, we will keep living in peace. And, uh, yeah, you keep trying, making me atheist. You, you <laughs> miserably. Okay.
it's it's worth trying though. But anyways, thank you so much for your time. I think it's the most important thing to take from these discussions is that it's possible to have civil discussions about passionate disagreements, right? Whatever our disagreements are, we need to learn how to get along, right? It, even if our disagreements are completely polar opposite, um, convincing each each other is less important than. Uh, being able to get along while disagreeing with each other. I think that's the most important. Thing. Definitely. And by the way, I just have a meeting now with a staunch leftist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we're going to go and we're going to have uh, another coffee. So I don't have... Uh, on Leftists are part of my daily meetings. This is the issue. And I don't have a problem uh, with them as, as people. I have a problem with their ideology. The okay. ideology that, you know, there's no problem uh, in... in uh, people who fight ISIS coming back to the country. I only care about national security. You see, my arguments today weren't about education. They weren't mm -hmm. about economy. You know, uh, they're not. They're not about healthcare. They're all about national security. And that's all I care about. And the left are failing at it poorly. So this is why I'm concerned. That's the only thing I have. Okay, sounds good. And and uh, thank you again. Again, where where and everybody knows where to find you, so I'm not even gonna ask. But I'm gonna link in the description anyways. Okay. But again, I thank you again so much for your time. I know you're very very busy, so I really appreciate. Are you this. coming down to Toronto anytime soon? Uh, I yes, um, in September I think. No, no, I meant this month or next month. No, no. Why? Okay. Well, I'm here. If you ever want to come, let, let's 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 have I a. Might Okay, I'm, I I might then if you're if you're, are you gonna are you leaving soon? You're not gonna be there for a while. Like you're uh, not gonna be there in September. No, no, not not September. Okay, so then then I might I might make some plans or something. Okay, awesome. Let's stay in touch. Okay. Uh, I really like speaking to you. I think I think you are honestly. I think I leave this part of the video. I think you are genuinely a good person, Armin. Uh -huh. I don't like those around you. Or let me rephrase, because you don't like generalization. I don't like some of those around you, but I, I really like you personally. And, uh, you know, you're someone I could speak to, and I feel you can understand me, because, of course, you come from a Shia Iranian background. And, uh, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Okay. I would be very interested. We have an Atheist Republic Persian uh, channel now, so I would be interested in one day talking in Persian with you about your views. But, <laughs> but uh, why do they keep attacking me? Well, yeah, yeah, but remember, it's the Atheist Republic, right? So it's not the Atheist, you know, I don't have control over the Atheist Republic because our, our team is supposed to, it gets to do what they do and I don't get to, the, you know, I thought, I can disagree with them, and I can tell them that I don't like this method, but it, because if it's a republic, if I get outvoted, then I don't have a say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I'm not uh, worried. You know, I have probably the thickest skin out there. I'm not worried about being attacked. It's just that they want to speak to me, but they're attacking me. No, so yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw it actually. I saw that. I actually criticized that. I thought it was personal. I don't like personal. I think we can disagree with each other. I think we could call out each other on on, on yeah, each yeah, yeah. other ideas. You don't. It doesn't need to become personal. Um, and There's nobody people who attack me, insult me, and then say we want an interview with you. <laughs> How is that going to happen? You yeah. can't attack me. You know, and then yeah. And then and, and also, people don't change their opinions because they were personally attacked. Like, what's the point of per personally attacking people? What, what's that going to accomplish? I mean, if you start personally attacking people, to me, it shows that you're not trying to change anything because the only way you could change things is by having conversation with people. Right, right, right. right. I definitely agree with you, brother. I look forward to speaking to you. All right, you too. Thank That's you. Up. Have a good day. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, 
Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.